Hello, welcome to lecture three of the deep learning course. Uh, today we will be talking about convolutional neural networks, which are networks responsible for several of the recent breakthroughs in uh, deep learning. So what we will be covering today, um, in the first part, we will be just talk about what uh, or why convolutional architectures are needed. In the second part, uh, we will be talking about one-dimensional convolutional networks. So there we will more go towards um, getting the concepts clear. In part three, we will scale up to more dimensions, so we'll go to two dimensions, three dimensions, and so on. And there we also get uh, a bit more theoretical. Then in part four, we will look at some example architectures. So, um, of the recent breakthroughs in deep learning, the ones which are often visible are, for example, things on images. So these are three examples where uh, a deep learning system, which also includes some convolutional neural networks, um, is able to create a description of an image. So basically the system gets an image and then produces a caption for that image. For example, the first one, you see a football player, uh, and then the system is able to generate a sentence like a soccer player is kicking a soccer ball. So what these kind of systems do is basically they get a lot of training data, so they get a lot of images with their captions. They learn from these, uh, from this kind of data set, and then they're able to apply that on images which the system has never seen before. As a second example, we can talk about what is called image segmentation, sometimes else called semantic image segmentation, in which the system is able to determine what certain parts of the picture are. So in what we see in the image here is uh, the system able to say that, for example, a certain part of the image is a horse, then you see a person sitting on the horse, you see a person in the background, and so on. Now, basically, when we, when we look at this, or when we want to understand how this works, we look back at our basic deep learning knowledge, and we have a bit of an issue. So we have that image coming in, but what we need for our deep learning model is features, All right? So for tabular data, meaning the typical table which you have, this would be simple. But what do we do with this more complex data? So an image is certainly more complex as a table. So let's look at an example. So here we have an image, and with this image we want to do something in our deep learning system. Now, the first thing which you realize is that an image Okay, it has a width, it has a depth, but also it has colors, right? And what we do with this is we split them into so-called color channels. Okay, you've probably already heard about RGB, so red, green, blue. And what we can do is we can uh, separate the image such that we have these three uh, channels separately. What we can then do is that for each of these color channels, so we can um, look at one of those one of those images now and for each pixel we can look at the intensity so how intensely red is each of these pixels we can encode that into a vector form because this intensity is just a number and then we could in principle concatenate all these vectors together to form one long vector representing uh, that image now a problem here is that the input dimensions are very big so that means uh, if we look at this one channel of an image, so the image which you just saw before, uh, that will have two million features. Okay. Now we have three channels, so that will already be six million, obviously. Now one second of sound, for example, sampled at 44 kilohertz, would similarly lead to 44,000 features. And then if you would have a video, um, and you think about how many features that actually has, well, it has sound, it has a moving image, so basically you have the frame rate of the video, so that means how many uh, images you see per second, times uh, the number of image features plus the sound. So if you have, for example, 10 seconds, then you get a formula there, which leads to an already very, very large number of features. Now, the problem is that this very large number of features is also just too big for our normal multilayer perceptron. And the example is here again repeated. So you have a, an image there, and that would lead to a two million dimensional vector. Now, 
that is not everything. The problem is that if we want to attach a neuron to this, so we want to make first, say, a hidden layer of our neural network, um, that neuron also needs 2 million weights. Uh, that neuron also needs space to store gradients. Um, and then on top of that, you probably want more than one neuron. You probably want several hidden layers. You want to have more or multiple neurons per layer. So you just have an extremely large amount of weights uh, needed if you want, if you would try to use this approach. So basically it means that we are not going to use this approach in practice because it's just not, not possible. Um, besides just having too many weights, um, it, 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 this system would just also not converge because you have to train all those weights and this would already not, uh, not be feasible. But on top of that, and that's again connected to too many weights, it would also not fit in a GPU memory. Right? So the largest GPUs now have about 48 gigabytes of memory and this is just more as what, uh, or this would just be more as that. Um, and we already discussed a bit about the gradient information. So now one thing which we notice with this kind of networks is that that's besides the argument of, of the size is that the features in this kind of data are not independent of each other. So they do have a locality. Okay, what that means is that um, if you have a pixel next to another one, uh, that has a certain meaning, right? But if you look at an MLP, it does not really care about this ordering. So if you have the nodes here, um, whether that node is here or below, or whether you mix up these nodes, the MLP doesn't really care. It does not sort of remember the ordering of the nodes. Okay, so what we did see is that we have this image. We know how to represent it in, in memory. We can basically encode it digitally. Um, and then we saw that the MLP, as we had it before, is not really suitable. So it's not really going to scale. It's not really going to work. So what we are going to do is to still try to uh, enable deep learning for this kind of data. And we have a couple of steps how we're going to do this. So first in 1D, we're going to build intuition. Then we are going to do a bit of formalization. Then we move to 2D and then we are trying to do uh, the same for higher dimensions, for example, images.